Hello there, welcome to a new build for Age of Wonders 4, where we utilize the Eldritch powers on the High Culture. It's been about time that I'm going to go into a different classic faction Eldritch builds, and this one provides crazy firing power. I mean, the High Culture is, in itself, one of the most powerful cultures, in my humble opinion, in the entire game, as their damage profile and their robustness is... Just if you take the base stuff, already insane. Whatever you add on it, it's just like adding gasoline into a fire. So let's do this. First off, we are relying a lot of battle ma uh, on battle mages in this build. So I went for a combination of Arcane Focus and Keen Sighted, because this gives us more smack and more courtesy. And of course, with the side of Adaptable, so our troops get those sweet, juicy, extra damage and resistance points from the high experience levels faster. With the cultural traits, well, I only insist on gifted casters, as I love to spam spells in this build. The second trait, powerful evokers, well, it is exchangeable, as, how to put it, there are a lot of other options that could fit in here better than this one. I wanted to try it out and I was a little bit underwhelmed. The only distinct advantage that this brought was a supporter unit right from the get-go, which is, for the high culture, kind of a big deal. But runesmiths or whatever other steroid for your culture you want to put in works just as fine. Okay, now let's talk about the tomes we're running here. I did not start with the Tome of Constriction, uh, Tentacle, because I personally wanted to get the power from the Evocation Tome just from the start. There's a couple of things in this Tome that we absolutely want. First of, of course, the amplification of Battle Mages and Supporters via Lightning Focus. It's another damage over time effect that we can stack onto the enemy, which is really nice. Lightning Blades amplifies the damage of our melee units against electrified people. Also really, really good. The Storm Spirits, you will rarely use them, as this faction does not really need any Shock Troopers. But the Evokers are a really nice available Battle Mage before you have your Awakeners. So these guys will see a lot of usage. More about that later. And of course, the Channeling Towers give you province improvements that act as conduits and give you mana for your ever-hungry economy, as you see there. The other one we're picking up is obviously the Tome of the Tentacle, otherwise we wouldn't really be a Eldritch build. So, we're picking up this Tome because Constrictors will replace our Racial Tier 2 Spears in many, many ways. I'm gonna explain that later, but the most hot pick here is the Constricting Focus. We're running a lot of troops that can trigger this, and it immobilizes and inflicts a damage over time effect on the enemy. If you use it on choke point situations, you can entirely hold a enemy's movement with this. You can freeze down whoever needs to be locked down. This thing is so freaking versatile by just adding it onto your battle mage. And that's only your first start. The Tantra Labyrinths belong to each and every city. They give gold and stability which is just nice, and the Tentacle Summoning spell, I love it as it gives you a disruptive tool that constricts enemies with its melee attack, and you can learn that on your heroes as well, so pure goodness. From this point on, I felt like I was already pretty much unstoppable, but things get better once you hit tier 2. We're picking up here Tome of Mayhem to amplify the power of our battle mages even further. Inflicting Misfortune is a real, real nasty little thing for the enemy to suffer through as we have a big lowering on the enemy's damage profile with that one and we can spread that out as a spell to hex radius is massive infectious insanity is a real power tool combined with the eldritch sovereign that we're playing gives us a lot of control on the enemy and yeah gremlins if you want them but uh, you really don't need them the interesting point about the gremlins is they deal quite a lot of damage and they're not that uh, costly hot to kill but i wouldn't really recommend them too much 
in the uh, research tree here. So confusion, on the other hand, was really, really cool when you're sieging down cities. Speaking about sieging down cities, we're getting there even better with the term of artificing. So the main, the main highlights here are artisan armaments with a 30% extra crit hit for our frontliners, which is just amazing. Upgrading these tier two spears into something really, really meaningful damage-wise. <laughs> and Siege Magic as a, another steroid for our mages, and speeding up the process of killing cities. Iron Golems fulfill an interesting role in our build, as they act as a really, really powerful frontliner that we can add in. Mind you that these also benefit from Artisan Armaments and all your other enchantments that we've had so far for melee units, and they make up for a really, really nice tank, as our racial tier 1 shield will ultimately not have the staying power to last through the entire game and of course don't sleep on the golem assistant it is really nice to have an extra summon just for free at the beginning of the fight golem mines are really cool they provide gold and production and some extra safety while you're fighting at home tier 3 i went directly into amplification and not into corruption as corruption is really powerful for this build, but only after this one. We want fighting power, and amplification does provide. So here we gain Frenzying Focus, which adds in strengthened stacks for our battle mages and supporters, bonkers stuff. Amplified Arrows is interesting in so far, as it upgrades your tier 1 units into acceptable units, and if you ever have the ability to get yourself some other better archers from somewhere else, mind you we're playing Eldritch, we can hijack units eventually, this is very interesting as it makes archer units strong enough for us to uh, pick them up. This one enchantment is badass enough in combination with Awakening and the other bonuses we have a lot via Mayhem and such. Amplify Minds, yeah, crank out more knowledge out of your city. It is really amazing as it does not really hurt us, it just neglects the stability bonus from the Tenure Labyrinth. So, really nice. This build stems with this one a nice amount of knowledge generation. And of course, Astral Blood gives all of our tro troopers a little bit more of critical hit chance. And as you see, from that point on, you will crit a lot. We have already the critical hit chance amplified via Artificing for our melee dudes. Now everybody gets that and our mages will hit even harder. Don't sleep on spell amplification, we have a couple of nuke spells in form of Fulmination, sorry that I didn't mention it, it's a sweet little one hex radius nuke, and we gain Chain Lightning, which is the big brother of that one, and yeah, spell amplification, cheap pick, makes them hit harder, what's not to like about that? Same goes for the resonance fields, build them in a big city eventually and enjoy the profit. Amplification pylons are interesting in so far, as they are summonables that can shoot and amplify the damage of your spells, so I like them. They're really costy, but I like them. So, eventually, of course, we're going to head on over into Corruption. So what does Corruption bring for our build? First off, Gloomstriders are amazing for us, as we are gaining a lot of heavy resilience against conditions. Mind you, we don't really have any good negative status effect cleanser on this build, and this really comes in handy. We gain extra defense, and we grow faster, and we can't ignore terrain. Yes, we suffer a little bit more from fire and spiritual damage, but this is a really low price to pay for all the goodness that we receive. Treacherous Reflection allows you to copy enemy troops, sometimes a godsend, often quite meh, but uh, it is worth mentioning. What we are really after is the Umbral Mistress, though. A multi-versatile, a very versatile tier 4 mythic battle mage unit that excels at demoralizing enemies, whittling them down, being very hard to kill, and just spreading a lot of crowd control over the battlefield. Pretty nifty stuff. The only downside about her is that you need a really, really high upgraded mage tower for that. Another reason why I tend to pick this up second you will not be able to summon the lady most of the time when you just hit tier 3, given the high um, knowledge production of this build. Corrupted Boon, hell yeah. Debuffing the enemy while stripping all of their buffs is a powerful move. And the Throne of Insidious Whispers gives us the mana that we hunger for, as we are really rocking a lot of unit enchantments, and as you see here, I'm barely breaking even in the current situation. Umbral Incursion lets you destroy enemy 
provinces. I always like that one. And we can also steal boons from enemies on our heroes. Mind you, stealing means your hero receives it. Really powerful, though. All in all, the Corruption Tome is basically the the solidification of your of your rule it does not add too much damage it adds in more utility more resilience more ways to piss off the enemy when they're buffing themselves like crazy so all in all it is more like a like a counter agent to what the enemy does from that point on well it's an interesting thing that you are very very free to choose where you want to go to after that i wouldn't even recommend the tier 4 paths if you can, get yourself some extra Chaos Affinity, Pandemonium Tome is a wonderful fit to this build. It is just as it is made for this build. Tome of the Horde could also be an interesting backtracking tool for this build, as Spawn Kinron is massive for your build. We are rocking almost only racial units, so that really hits hard. There's a lot of really little things that you could add into, namely more damage via pyromancy. There's so many ways where we, we could add in more stuff. While the T4 tomes, we have only native access to astral stuff. Astral convergence is nice as it allows us to bang more 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 spells out but astral attunement is a non-fit for us as we already rock a major racial transformation and after that there is not that much left in this tome to facilitate it, uh, its power too much an astral mirror well sometimes it's good but most of the time it's pretty much a nothing burger because it just uh, copies what the enemy does and the reflection effects are not that amazing to begin with so backtracking into other things sounds to me much more fascinating as pandemonium and devastation would be really really good fits for your build even if you could get yourself some more materium influence you could go for the eventually for the tome of the crucible upgrading your archers into something crazy but you would need archers for that tome of the golden realm can be utilized also well choose for your own liking there's really a lot of pathing that you can go through after that now strategy and troops we are running uh, on the wrong, wrong city here that's the right one so dawn defenders are well, just a necessary evil. Don't build any extra of these. I really did not need any extra Dawn Defenders after a while, and at the end of the day, they will be replaced by Iron Golems, and that's the end of the story. The Dusk Hunters are interesting in so far, as they remain your main archers for basically forever. So if you want to fit in a couple of them into your, uh, into your roster, like two or three of them, you won't regret it too much as we add in with the awakening bonus a nice amount of damage on these guys and even if their damage profile is low they're very cheaply available everywhere they eventually debuff the enemy quite heavily as they inflict the mark of misfortune here and yeah they have a very high range due to the uh, seeking arrows trade but don't don't build too many of these we are really after a solid core of tier 2 units that's where we are really really shining at constrictors are your better tier two spears forget about your racial ones these guys pull constrict and just have a little bit less magic resistance but a little bit more armor so all together the job of these is to hold the line pull anything away that is threatening your back line and just suppress anybody who's threatening to get into your back line and die if necessary that's the sad part about their existence but that is really what they're all about the daylight spear is just the same just worse basically without the constriction effect that's why we don't want the daylight spear too much the really interesting part about the pole is that it has a fairly high range and a fairly high base success chance evokers are your bread and butter battle mages because awakeners are just too costly to come by early on they have a nice hitting attack with all the upgrades that we run they really hit like a truck very quickly they do apply misfortune and constriction eventually and to top it all off they have a nice three blast uh, three target blast aoe ish spell which also inflicts electrification there's not much more to write home about these guys they are basically just your run-of-the-mill battle mage to inflict damage the main advantage that you have upon 
other builds is that this guy comes level uh, comes as a tier two unit, and the longer you play them, the more deadly they become as their damage profile. Ah, come on, stay here. Will increase twice, and they also gain the Evoker Medal, which will increase their damage profile a third time. So altogether, these guys eventually get pretty hard to kill and become pretty hot, uh, pretty hot hidden. Sun Priests are the other main backbone of your army. They hit surprisingly hard as they gain all the upgrades out of the Battle Mage Tree that we apply to them. They are able to awaken two units, and this is the mandatory thing they, they do. They have that on a very low cooldown. They can awaken people while healing them as well, and they have this wonderful ability to distract enemies if they are awakened, which makes them automatically get flanked. Super powerful stuff, as that means a Awakened Sun Priest is a wonderful primer to make an enemy vulnerable via distracting them. Alongside with all the other wonderful things that we apply. Misfortune, Constriction, Electrification, there's really a lot going on with these guys. So, Tier 3, of course we want the Awakeners. These are just the better version of War Evokers in every single aspect. If you can't afford it, you eventually want to replace them all together, but, well... You need the evokers for the early and the mid game. You won't be able to get yourself an awakener army fast enough, so that's why they are good to have. So, what's so special about awakeners? Their base attack is of course harder hitting than the tier 2 version, and their exposing light is just so much better than the uh, arcing uh, lightning thing. It's a one hex radius nuke that hits much harder, and it strips defenses. End of story. It's amazing. And they also get to awaken units for us as a free action so they are just yeah like i said best stuff that you can't get yourself down and of course if they are awakened all your battle mages also inflict distraction which increases the damage profile of this build in a really really massive way replace eventually your dawn defenders with the iron golems like i've talked about and you won't need too much of the summoning department here altogether my army that i'm rocking here is very very much composed out of uh, a lot of battle mages and so Borders with a few frontliners and a couple of heroes spamming summons out to mitigate the frontline brunt. So if you don't get yourself heroes that have nice summoning abilities, if you can't draft yourself enough of these, you should add in more of the spear guys. Uh, in this scenario, 60 person melee, a mixture of spears and shields, and 40% uh, no 40 percent melee, spears and shields, and 60% backliners, battle mages, and supporters. This build can easily handle that out of the simple reason that we have so much staying power on our spellbook. We can spam tentacles wherever the enemy is threatening to break through. We can awaken units and strengthen them at the same time, or, or strengthen them if they are already awakened. We can heal units with a racial spell that comes off dirt cheap, and we have, in form of or other debuffing magic, lots of options to stop the enemy from attacking us. Top this off with the um, nice burst heal that your Sun Priests already have away available, because Sun Priests, their cooldown of their heal spell is really low. And I combine in this army, my personal favorite is, as usual, combining supportive spells, summons, and this way we can keep 90% of the front line alive at all times. Your Eldritch Ruler is going to be using a lot of crowd control. I was rocking here the Eldritch Truth path as this gives you another insanity tool. Your main threat is stuff that breaks through your backline that you can't take out and it starts blocking your mages. This is the worst case scenario and this is what you should try to avoid under all circumstances. But it is very easy given the fact that we can pull enemies make them insane and do all manner of other nasty things to them. Another really really powerful part of this build is due to the fact uh, due to our order base affinity as the high culture that we are we have a lot of access to whispering stone mechanics. That means you just learn all seeing, 
you learn Chord of Whispers, you learn here an extra diplomatic chance, Whispering Stone, you take one here, and you have your own knowledge factory going on by just slapping it onto free cities. Does not work in every realm. For example, here we have a realm that comes with almost no free cities, so it does. It is not always a viable option, but uh, well, it is what it is. This build has an insane hunger for mana, though. As you see here, the unit enchantment upkeep is insane. You can utilize, like I said, rune smiths to mitigate that a little bit, but. I found the hunger for upkeep in this build to be the most pressing matter. But as long as you keep upgrading your racial units and uh, going for those tomes and those buildings to upgrade the mana, I haven't had any issue with winning pretty much every battle like, uh, like easy. Auto battle does not work so well on this build. I have noticed that the AI really has a, uh, has a certain tendency to just kill off their units well it is what it is you can't have it all but uh, altogether wonderful build massive staying power the eldritch combination does make you nigh invincible because whatever could threaten your armies can be taken out by your eldritch sovereign eventually the umbral mistresses come into play as well for a similar role and if you happen to get yourself hands on the tome of devastation you also, uh, not Devastation, uh, Pandemonium, you can amplify this by a lot. The Chaos Eaters will help you to get yourself a late game uh, AoE nuke for all the negative status effects and yeah, what can I say? It's a massive build, it utilizes the Eldritch Realms really well and I enjoyed it. So tell me what you think about it, consider leaving a thumbs up or a comment or a subscription, whatever. Down there in the description box you will find a playlist link to all my Age of Wonders stuff that I did so far. And there's also links for support in the channel, feel free to do so. Many thanks if you do, and a lot of thanks to you for watching this video up until the very end. I really, really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, and see you soon.